the state opening of Parliament. The Lord Great Chamberlain bears the imperial state crown into the robing room. The crown is the ancient symbol of supreme authority. For 40 years, it has been worn by Queen Elizabeth II. It was in Kenya on February the 6th, 1952, that the Queen heard of her accession to the throne. Her tour of the Commonwealth Castle, the princess we knew as a girl and watched in the even growth of her stature, comes back to meet her ministers as Queen over the great lands that for 15 years acknowledged her father as head. In a way, I didn't have an apprenticeship. My father died much too young, and so it was all a very sudden kind of taking on and making the best job you can. It's a question of maturing and into something that one got used to doing and accepting the fact that here you are and, and it's your fate because I think continuity is very important. It is a, a job for life. Continuity and tradition. The Queen is now one of the longest serving heads of state in the world. The ceremony of monarchy does not change, but behind the pageantry is a different world. November 1990. It's nine o'clock in the morning, and the Queen's Pipe Major plays on the terrace of her London home, Buckingham Palace. A daily ritual begun by Queen Victoria. 150 years ago. Beyond this 40-acre garden, it's a season of discord. Iraq has invaded Kuwait and holds Westerners hostage. There's a threat of war. But for the 368 people who work at the palace, it's business as usual this morning. The Queen spends more time opening letters in Parliament. Today's business, brought to her by her private secretary, Sir Robert Fellows, includes a last look at the script of the Christmas message. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Robert. Your voice sounds a little bit better, ma'am. Yes, it's getting better, ma'am. Huh? It's a job, though. Well, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who got it, I think. It's rather difficult to avoid getting it. Yes. Ma'am, you've got the latest text, I think, of the broadcast, which I've been having a, a go at over the, the last week or two. And I did incidentally show it the other day to the Prime Minister, who who seemed, on the whole, to like it. He had one or two rather good suggestions, which I'll come to if we go through. Yes, I did mention it to him. The, the difficulties with uh, trying to get something at a particular juncture, you know. The gulf is going to be uppermost in everyone's mind, and I think they'd be amazed if it wasn't the first thing you turned to anyway. And I and I hope it's not too gloomy that. The tricky business is, of course, is the hostages, who will be nearly all right by then, I suspect. Mm -hmm. um, the Foreign Secretary is very keen to mention the uh, ambassadors. Though it now looks as if the chap in Kuwait is going to be out by then. Mm -hmm. I've seen the papers today, it's going to come out. Um, 
Hookie Walker, I think, will still be in Baghdad. Uh, and that was the Prime Minister. He doesn't have all those people in tents in his garden. No. And he's, um, he's not doing his own cooking either, I think. <laughs> the contentious bit, I think, is the next paragraph. Well, maybe one might uh, soften it down a bit. Violent and vociferous is too <laughs> yeah. sharp. I think it might have one. one adjective, yes, right. It sounds a bit too Churchillian, I think. Well, yes, it's also <laughs> very difficult to say. Vociferous is, is all right, ma'am. Would you hmm. happy with that? Well, these two men are coming through Christmas. Yes. Well, they're not coming through Christmas. November the 30th, the Royal Train is on its way north. Yes, equally, I mean, if, uh, I feel a slight disappointment rather than anger. Um, Among the support team of a dozen or so is Charles Anson, the Queen's new press secretary, and Richenda Elton, one of her ladies-in-waiting. The party also includes the Aquarii, Blair Stuart Wilson. The Queen makes about 30 of these away day visits a year. Every detail of the two-day trip has been checked on the spot by one of the Queen's staff. In this case, the Deputy Private Secretary, Sir Kenneth Scott. One thirty arrival. And Mr. Gibbs, the President, is going to present you with a rugby ball and six rugby jerseys for the grandchildren. Um, of a sort of thirty. Um, Even for the girls. Even for the girls, yes. Even for the girls to wear rugby jerseys. <laughs> um, and then a plaque outside. And then a plaque outside. This is small children. Um, rushing about at each other in the combat room. Um, and then plaque. Uh, another plaque. In the main lounge downstairs, uh, there will be four tables with staff and residents sitting at them. And at each table, there will be two um, vacant chairs. And the idea is that you and Richenda would move from table to table. Um, and talk to people sitting down to the people that will be here for um, Then another pack. Another pack. I don't think you can stay in London all the time. You have to visit other parts of the country either find out what's going on or try and encourage um, people in, in uh, different areas, some of which have unemployment, some of which have new factories. And I think the possibility of meeting more people is very important. A lot of people don't come to London very often, so we travel to them instead. One sports centre, one new ship, one new bridge, and one new bypass later, 
the day ends at a retirement home in Heckman White, Yorkshire. This is not the Queen as head of state. Nothing in the Constitution says she has to come here. She's here as head of the nation, the personal focus of people's loyalty and affection. I've been around here for some time. No, huh? And give it down a while. It's all 20 years in there. It must be, yes. Back to pageantry and ceremony. Back to Buckingham Palace. A formal welcome to another head of state. There are usually two such visits a year, so a foreign head of state will be invited once only during his time in office. Today, the Queen's guest is Francesca Cosiga, President of the Republic of Italy. Now is the time for the exchange of gifts and honors. It's a way of tempering the formality of a state event with the friendliness of a family occasion. Well, now, the, 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 the official Oh, friend. yes, thank you very much. Yes, I know the of the, 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 the family. Yes, <laughs> which is uh, a present which uh, is, is uh, given a great deal of pleasure. And very pleasure for me. And, and this is a... This is a, a slightly more personal. Oh, thank you. Of, it's of, of, of China, which I think the history of it is, is in there. So I hope it will remind you of your visit you here. Oh, this is for my wife. And that is for your wife. Oh, thank you very much. Which is a, yes. which is a small, a small clock. 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 This. Oh, this is yours. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Can we go? Yeah. 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 I hope you like it. I hope you like it. Well, I'm afraid to get that as well. So very beautiful boys, huh? Yes. So very beautiful boys. So. Well, thank you. Do you know what they say? The good. Well, we know you do, too, yeah. so. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Oh, thank you. Like, like the, the, the clock. Oh, the clock. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look more like this. This is lovely, isn't it? Very heavy. Lo posso fare apposta per vostra metà. Isn't that lovely? It's ordinato. Well, that's very kind indeed. You're wrong. That's great. The season of gifts. It's the week before Christmas, and the Regency Room at Buckingham Palace has become a small television studio to record the Queen's Christmas message. All oh, we need is something kind of a, a, a huge date, a couple of um, injections there, not exactly what we want to do. The Queen made her first broadcast on Children's Hour in 1940. This year, the producer is David Attenborough. The stars of his films don't often use scripts and teleprompters. And just look on the camera. Electronic camera. And uh, that's teleprompter. Uh, yeah. Christmas time. For it seems to me 
that there is one deep and overriding anxiety for us all, on which we should reflect today. That is the threat of war in the Middle East. The servicemen in the Gulf who are spending Christmas at their post under this threat are much in our thoughts. This year there have been, I hope, times of happiness and good cheer for most of us. My family, for instance, has been celebrating my youngest grandchild's christening. I hope that all of us lucky enough to be able to enjoy such gatherings this Christmas will take time to count our blessings. The nanny's been sitting in the next one. Yes, we yes. wanted yes. them. Yeah. We wanted yeah. our cousins. Quite happy. Very nice. Lovely smile. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Good. Do you want the rest of it? Mm. Want them all? two days before Christmas. The christening party of Princess Eugenie of York, the Queen's sixth grandchild, and sixth in line to the throne. In fact, Ten of the first eleven in line are here. Right, off you go. Put it up, man. Good morning, Your Majesty. Um, another one. Well, yes, yes, another one. Um, <laughs> we'll be there so quickly. Yeah. Now, if you're just standing here in a right. line, right. we'll be fine. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can I come around here? Ready? Looking at the camera, everybody. Thank you. Lovely. Sandringham um, is an right. escape place, but it is also a working place and a commercially viable bit of England. I like farming. It's not really easy nowadays. I like animals. I wouldn't be happy if I just had arable farming. I think that's very boring. But I suppose that because it's an heritage place, one's known each other since one was a child, I knew how much my father had enjoyed it. Well, in fact, all my family, ever since King Edward bought it, they've all enjoyed being there. And they've very, very much involved with the people who live on the estate, so that one has a responsibility towards them very much. I have the son there too, which is my sort of responsibility, and that I enjoy doing. King Edward put the stud there, and he enjoyed racing. And I think we've all enjoyed racing. But it isn't a profitable venture at the moment, because the problems of racing are so very great. But I think that one always, as a human being, one always has hope. And one always has uh, perhaps the gambling instinct that one's horse is going to be better than the next man's horse. And that's why one goes on doing it. I don't know, it must have knocked it, because... Well, it no, no, it, could, it couldn't. If it had been a proper tendon injury, it, it wouldn't have got better. It's funny, because he, if he hadn't done that, he should have won the derby. Mm. And he beat the derby winner twice, and the derby second twice. Mm. You can see those mares right over in the... In the you can see um, fancies. You certainly have good eyesight. Yeah. I suppose I have decent. It's a very level walk, huh? Yes. Another, another thing, you see nearly, nearly um, a week, you see? Yeah. I mean, at least very, very nearly. Well, I wouldn't be careful of those. Yeah. very flat feet, huh? I love this thing. Mm, rolling down. Not anybody can say the North is flat, Sandra. Yes, we, we've done all right. We've done the whole. We got the rough one. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a big Philly superintendent there. I know, that's what made me wonder. I think they'd arrested him. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that in the superintendent protecting rabbits, you know. Let's have a go at this ivy on the bottom of these trees. We've, um, yes, we'll kill it and then we'll pull it off when it's all died down. My grandmother's day, there would never have been any idea anywhere. <laughs> we had passionate hatred for it. Mm. Although we go to the kennels now, ma'am. Right. I'm going to take it all alone, get your feet on it. Where do you put it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Some lizards are not watching. During the summer, you see, when you're training them, and you have to sit. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, but it's just dog, you see. It's so cruel. <laughs> He'll probably go back. Ray, you're not supposed to do that. I won't be here. No way. I'm not here. Go and do your stuff. Ray. Now come back to here and then we'll work them down the way. Oh, come along, then. The Queen spends Christmas and New Year at Sandringham. But wherever she is, one of her three private secretaries is always in attendance. Sir Robert Fellows is son of the land agent who once ran the estate here at Sandringham. A city broker for 14 years is married to the Princess of Wales' elder sister. Jane went the other day with... No, it was the uh, two little ones, and it's a very, very long year. Is it? Mm. Ah. Two and a half hours, it's quite a long journey. But... Ma'am, it looks rather as if people have come alive after... The long gap. Yeah, and they look quite a lot. Just on the top here, there's some Christmas cards in there, actually. That's some... Um, yep. And then one. Several signings, ma'am. There's um, a couple of remissions. The first one is a very unusual one. And this chap discovered well, playing again on, and, um, and in fact he got two good marks, and so he's getting remissions, even though he's got a fairly long list of offences himself. Nothing, anything to do with the strange ways, is all that. Hmm. Interesting. Then the other one um, is the chap who who helped out when there was obviously a riot of some kind. The National Canine Defence League, ma'am, um, they wondered if, mm -hmm. uh, if, in honour of that centenary, you had become patron of the charity as a whole. I had my doubts, ma'am, about adding to your 800 odd patronages. At this stage, particularly, you have the RSPCA and the Dogs Fountain as well. National Canine Defense. I didn't know much about them, and I could find out a bit more if you thought it was worth it. I think that'd be an excellent idea. In London, 
the palace feels cut off by the snow. Animal, I don't know the Rothschild. In Holland Park or Slendrick. Mm. Oh. Ten out of eight. Yes. Got there at a quarter to ten. Yes, yes, yes. I must have been just next door to where you did. Yes, yes. Right. I heard all kinds of stories about you. And I said, wait until you turn around and go home. She said, I couldn't. There was no way I couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best of still on. You see the balloons are still stuck in the tree there. Yes, we were asking. We were trying to get the keeper of the British Post to take a shotgun out. Oh, well, they're rather pretty. They look rather better than a lot of crows. Yes, but they look awful. But then because they just look a bit of shredded rubber. Shredded rubber. Yes. Like after the, uh, the uh, green petrol. Yeah. yeah. They hit the trees and it exploded. And the garden absolutely full of dead balloons. <laughs> very, very disagreeable. Not very good. Not at all. There are over 20 billion portraits of the Queen in existence, if you count stamps, coins and banknotes. The painter of this extra one is Andrew Festing, son of a field marshal. Father thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. He was more interested in that. Mm -hmm. But he was, I do get it from him. I mean, I did, I think I, I get it from his side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was quite artistic. Mm -hmm. That's right, yes. A man collector. Mm -hmm. But he also could, could explain about you know, his collection. That is what we said, Catherine. Yes. You know? Yes. I mean, to me, it was all I was fascinated with this book. It's so something hanging on a wall. But to have him explain it, yes. you know, that's absolutely yes. fascinating. Yes. They were real things. Yes. You know, objects of. Yes. And you, could, you could almost imagine who would have used them, yes. what they would have been used for. Yes. So he was, I mean, the whole thing was, uh, he was when he was relatively old, he used to go to walk. Outside, carrying all these old guns and pistols in his pocket. <clears throat> and he always travelled everywhere with, with a pair of flintlock pistols mm -hmm. and stuffed away in some pocket. Mm -hmm. Whenever he came to London, he used to always carry them in the train. So he lived this sort of fantasy life almost. <laughs> he was some 18th century character, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Well, that probably explains how so many of our pistols have disappeared <laughs> found in some sales, sales catalogue. <laughs> People do things like that. They think they're somebody else. You know, walk off with them. <laughs> I don't know. He didn't. It's not no, necessary. No, other people like him. <laughs> The gas lamps are lit for the palace's grandest party of the year, the annual reception for the diplomatic corps, with 1,300 guests. Foreign diplomats are accredited to the court of St. James, that is, to the crown, not to the government. Unfortunately, the ambassador for Chad didn't take the pistol. Otherwise, everybody else. Should. And the poor um, Kuwaiti ambassador wife not here. Unfortunately, she's not here. Due to the fact that her brother has died, and um, so she was be murdered. Murdered. Lining the picture gallery and six other state apartments are some 130 ambassadors in order of diplomatic precedence. The Iraqi ambassador is not among them. The ambassador of Kuwait. Thank you. Very sorry, old wife couldn't 
Thank you. Do you have some? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad. Family problems. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I think a lot of people have been in very much the same situation. In fact, a lot of wives have had babies since the ship's gone up It's very sad, really, but that's just life, isn't yeah. it? I, I think maybe we're having to do some extra to be able to cope with the Iran and Russia from somewhere. It's February the 25th, 1991, and a long threatened land offensive has just begun. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's very kind of you. Come and uh, spare the time to tell me about it. Uh, we have awful awesome things that are going on. A good run around the house, Tom. I made statements. You made statements. I haven't had a chance to. Which was yeah. sandwiched on television between uh, the American and British press. Uh, but uh, it's been a good start. Mm. Uh, certainly, I mean, uh, I've said it's 38 and a half hours since this ground it's campaign very, it's very short time. started, and it, it is very mm. encouraging. But now we're into the critical. Windsor Castle, early spring. The brief Gulf War is over, and in happier circumstances, the Queen has invited a group of guests from British public life to have dinner here and stay for the night. It's called a dine and sleep. Political opponents meet as fellow guests, with perhaps an archbishop thrown in. These two blank shields up there, which are two people who, who were, oh, yes. um, were nice to guard us. There's all these shields that I have. And, yes. and, and they were, see, they were all, they were them. All right. <laughs> A guided tour after dinner always ends with a carefully chosen exhibition in the library. But you're, you're touching, but I, I almost feel holy things. It's so ancient, isn't it? And it's kind of... I've got the Holman Society. In February 1898. And they sang, according to Queen Victoria, they sang God Save the Queen in Welsh. All of the minors, she says. I suspect this one by Lord John Lord himself, yes. Yeah. No. That's her writing, see. That's and the Queen's writing. Her diary. And, and this is her diary, which unfortunately is rewritten. I tried to find another scribe. Yes, she tore up. She thought her mother's diaries were too frank. Ah. So she destroyed them. She rewrote them. And it's the expurgated version. And that's her expurgated version. But I mean, still very, very interesting. It's a real copy place, Victorian yes. copy place. With a real rhythm of writing. But her writing is very difficult to understand. Would Sir Henry think? You've got a crib there, Kenneth. Well, it's a I thought you was Mr. William Harcourt. You're doing very well. Good Sir Henry. Henry. <laughs> Thank Sir William Harcourt. Who was the Home Secretary? <laughs> must be, as you watch these records, you're glad of the word process, then. Well, they can't, they can't be left out, you see. No, they no. It's a primitive edition of the plays of Jay and Barry. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Mm. <laughs> see, that's the, the library yeah, one. Right. Peter Pan. Mm. He was the most wonderful storyteller. Mm. Um, as children, we used to go mm. to tea, and, and he'd tell them a wonderful Did story. He? Yes. He, he just happened to be the sort of person that could tell children mm. stories. It didn't matter if you were just sitting at the tea table. Mm. It, it, it's very interesting. Mm. And of course, boringly, if one was a small child, one didn't realize yeah, quite. what a good yeah. storyteller one was listening to. Yeah. If only one had known. <laughs> Love that. That yeah. shows that the, that the man seeing the, seeing the books had been around. Mm. And this book, when you say you use this book, it's your foundation. Is that the third book? 
This was the, well, that's the service. Yeah, the, the book of service, yes. And, I mean, I, I, because my grandfather and my father yeah. had, had yeah. passion for writing things. Yeah. So, so I thought I'd yeah, let them do it. Yeah, absolutely. But you see, nobody writes anymore, oh, so, so there nothing left. Yeah, I funny. keep a diary, but it's not really a diary like Queen Victoria's, you know, or as, as detailed as that. It's, it's quite small. Did you write I it can... in your own hand? Oh, really? Yes, I think it's very important. I can't write any other way. Back at the office, the daily routine begins with the Royal Mail. Most of it's like the Queen's Diary, written by hand. She receives between two and three hundred letters a day. Well, I've always had rather a sort of feeling that, that letters are rather personal to oneself, you know, because people write them thinking that I'm going to, to open them and read them. I, I don't open all of them, obviously, because I don't have time to do that. But it does certainly give me, um, I suppose, because one gets perhaps even sort of a bit more remote, um, one, it gives one an idea of what, what is worrying people and what actually um, they feel that I could do to help. And, I mean, there are occasions when I can help. I can pass things on to the right authorities or I can, even in some cases, write to various organizations who will uh, look into it but I, I i've always had the feeling that letters are written to me and i, I like to see what people want to, to write to me I, I think in a way one one feels that uh, there is a sort of uh, the buck stops here so to speak many letters are written to the queen as a private individual letters from children or well-wishers or even people wanting to know where to buy a corgi these are answered on her behalf by her ladies-in-waiting, in this case, Lady Susan Hussey. And now this is to um, the, the jigsaw puzzle people, you know, who send the Queen jigsaw puzzles to do during the holidays at Sandringham. And the puzzle, unfortunately, had two missing when it arrived at Sandringham this the, the time. And uh, the lady is writing to apologize for this and saying she promises she will... She will do the puzzle herself before she sends it next time. Mm -hmm. But as the Queen says on this note here, yeah, I hope she does. It's a very difficult puzzle to do on your own. <laughs> Other letters have official implications, often involving a local council or government department. They normally go to the private secretary for investigation and reply. Um, and then another one we've had in here from a councillor uh, from Newcastle on Tyne, writing on behalf of one of his um, constituents, saying that he, he objects to his poll tax um, taking into consideration his war pension. Um, now, I've rung the Department of the Environment, who tell me that, in fact, it's a matter for the rebate side of the Department of Social Services. Yeah. So I think if that's right, you are on telephone yeah. and then yeah. find out yeah. if we can give you yeah. any other information. Okay. Um, and the one previous to that is um, I'm in touch with... Uh, the uh, Scotland Yard um, Solicitor's Department. This person ha runs a ambulance service to help the uh, homeless people in um, London. Oh, I'm, yes. And he said he'd been harassed by Kennington police. Um, he's obviously <clears throat> had problems before. Mm. He said he had a hearing for magistrates to court. Mm. Um, Another way of keeping in touch with life outside the closed circle of the royal household is the private audience, usually lasting 20 minutes. Audiences are my way of meeting people without anybody else listening. And that gives one a very broad picture of what is actually going on either in government or in the civil service. A lot of them are, are um, regular ones, you know, but you, you can ask to see anybody you want to see. The Honourable Mr. Justice Blowfeld, your Majesty. I mean, if one meets a lot of people, <clears throat> one, one just does, does get to know what's going on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
It's all in nice one. Yes. It's not very weighty. Yeah, well, I didn't know. I didn't realize one must have got it out. Yes, yes, on yes. the fact that there's nobody else there, it gives them a feeling that they can say what they like, which, after all, is, is part of the sort of base of where I get my information from. I suppose that the crime is still, I'm afraid, all of them. In, in the ascent increase, isn't it? I don't, I don't know what's going to stop it. Whether it's the fact that, that, that they're discovering more. I think with all the... I think white-collar crime and um, all this sort of fraud. Yes. So this new case just started? Yes, it is. Uh, yes. It's going to take months. Well, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. The Ambassador of the United States of America. Because the President just seems to be too, hasn't he? Which is... It must be quite... Uh, Mr. Yeltsin came to, uh, to Washington uh, just about a week ago. Hmm. And they had about uh, 90 minutes together. And then the president came out. And uh, I think he wanted to make the effort both to recognize the, the fact that there was now a Russian leader who had won a popular vote. And there had not been one of those in a very long time. But also hmm. to recognize the legitimacy of Mr. Hmm. Gorbachev. It's now April, and Windsor Castle is getting ready for its big event of the year. The three-day state visit by a former shipyard electrician from Gdansk, now the president of Poland, Lech Wałęsa. He is the 65th head of state to visit Britain in the Queen's reign, and the first ever from Poland. He and his wife will be staying in the six-room principal suite. Among the previous occupants, the King of Spain, the Emir of Bahrain, and President Reagan. A lot of the visits nowadays have a very strong political tone to them. And, and we are really the, the, um, the hosts, basically. I mean, we give the entertainment initially and have the people to stay, hoping to give them a nice time to remember. And obviously, we, we keep up as many of the traditions as we can that are sensible to keep, like staying in carriages. The high point of all state visits is the banquet on the first evening. The table settings are of legendary splendor. Tonight's pudding service is French, late 18th century. The dessert service for fruit will be the Royal Minton, made for Queen Victoria in 1876. I think in a way, it's, it's quite an old-fashioned <coughs> idea that you do. Um, put out the red carpet for the guests. I mean, I think people don't really re realize this, but, you know, I do tell the guests that we do put on our best clothes and everybody dresses up. And the best china and the glass and the, and the gold plate comes out, which otherwise doesn't see the light of day. So it's very nice to be able to, to use it and show it. Well, she's sitting here, and I just yeah. got this message, and it's unfortunate she can't come, so we, we know we've got to take exactly. her. Out. We have to put somebody from the household, the lady from the household. Yes. Who's in the overflow. Well, mm -hmm. who's involved? Fortunately, there is one lady in the overflow, and that's Lady Mary Mumford. So we could bring so her. she'd be fine. Oh, no, she wouldn't. No. She'd be next. She'd be next. Yes. We have to do a double move somewhere. Soon, the 160-foot-long mahogany table made for Queen Victoria will be glistening with silver gilt cutlery and plate and some 800 Stourbridge crystal glasses made with the Queen's monogram. 
Meanwhile, the kitchen is preparing quail's eggs, to be followed by canela turbot, then veal, and finally peaches toscan. Each course to be served simultaneously to 160 guests. If you do put out the best china and glass, it doesn't necessarily make it overwhelming if you don't accept it as overwhelming. Because if people are kind to you and, and make you feel at home, I, I don't think that the outward is the really. It's, it's what goes on inside that really matters. But sometimes it, it is worth explaining that we put it on, you know, especially, and that we don't actually live like this all the time. Everything has to be ready by late afternoon for the Queen to make her tour of inspection with the Master of the Household, Sir Paul Greeny. Yeah. Well, it is. I heard moved the furniture. And I, um, have lit the fire. Yes. Yeah. And I said that it looks quite sort of friendly like. Um, um, but he's, he's amazed by the size of everything. That's what amuses me. For the rooms. Yeah. Yes. And he goes around, he's very two English words, uh, a quite interesting word. And he, and he goes around looking, you know, and good heavens. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, it's And here's my daughter, Anne. Uh, uh, so nice and uh, that is Ken. And that's Alexandra. And Ogilvy, uh, her husband. <laughs> Michael Kim. Uh, uh, and his wife. Uh, Michael Kim. Uh, 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 so now you've met quite a number of the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I tell you that you give up your number, take the fish, take it into the dining room, come back, there'll be a sauce. You come, take that into the dining room, come back again, and take in your salad. And then stay in the dining room until your fish and your sauce has been served, and clear it out to the Waterloo chamber. Okay. She's a very strict mother, but she's a
convince you, Miss Rose. They're not really very practical. They couldn't have been practical, even in the days when somebody used to walk those things. Nothing quite warm, though, I suppose. It's certainly warm on a June day, plodding yes, down. I bet. It's always very lucky if you plod downhill and not uphill. The Queen has sat for more than a hundred portraits since she came to the throne, one in ten in Garter Road. Andrew Festing will have half a dozen sittings for this one. It has been commissioned by the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst for its 250th anniversary. It looks like a few more tourists, doesn't it? Okay. A very good mixture here, bear skins and flat hats. This is a light duty for Sir Kenneth Scott, the Deputy Private Secretary who was once our ambassador to Yugoslavia. His main preoccupation at the moment is preparing for one of the biggest royal events of the year, the Queen's forthcoming state visit to the USA. Are you going off to Washington tomorrow morning? I hope. We're having trouble with Mount Vernon. Uh, I think we may have to go there by car. Good morning, rather than by boat down the river. And they're having trouble finding a yacht. Jimmy Carter sold the presidential yacht. But other than that, I think Washington is pretty well. On the football match. Baseball match. Will be required to pitch the third ball. Are you sure? Well, he will be armed. <laughs> May the 14th, off to Washington, flying the flag. State visits are an old fashioned way of traveling about, but I think they still have their point. There does seem to be still a need for people to be seen to be making a, an effort to go to other countries. I mean, I've been to the United States before, but, but at this moment it was very nice to be able to go to America. Post Gulf War, I was able to say thank you, and they were able to say thank you. How is it delayed? It's about uh, state dinner, I should think, four, five, six minutes, I guess. Um, it's been to a certain amount, I believe, in was his first draft. Um, I think it rains well. The embassy were particularly keen to get the, the those two interns in, the one on the ethnic side of things. The visit begins with an official welcome on the White House lawn from President Bush. Unfortunately, no one adjusted the podium, so instead of the head of state, the world press and television see only the hat of state. Mr. President, it is 15 years since our last visit to Washington, when, with a gallant disregard for history... Through the perversity of publicity, this is to become the talking point of the trip. ...anniversary of the founding of this great nation. Two days later, the first ever address to the Joint Houses of Congress by a British sovereign in a republic that became independent by armed revolution against her great-great-great-great-grandfather, George III, two centuries ago. It is a nerve-wracking occasion. Yeah, okay. And if you wanted to try that little thing at the beginning, ma'am, I'm people I've talked to seem to think it would be a very good icebreaker. Uh-huh. Suggest before you say anything at all. Yes. When you go up there, you see, you go straight to the podium, and I'll give you your speech as you, you stand wait there, there. And you wait there for the welcome which comes from above, from the speaker yes. sitting above you. And it is going to be built for you and <laughs> <laughs> for anyone else this time. <laughs> so our chap Ralph is next door. I'll go and ask that. Mm -hmm. that. Yes, yes, this is really nice. something that I would ever have actually thought of beforehand, you know? I don't think one forgets the president's quite tall. He's huge, then. He's very tall. 
Now, I've got Richard Ralph here from the engine room, who can actually talk to you every step of the way from the moment you get into the chamber. No, I, I just wondered, because I, I'm presuming on my back to everybody, didn't I? I mean, I just have my back to the people at the engine room. Stop. You do. Shall, um, would you like me to start from the moment you walk into the chamber? No, because, I mean, somebody uh, walks one in. You'll be preceded down, and there will probably be congressmen who will lean out. They may well want to uh, reach out to shake your hand as you proceed down towards the, the podium. And there will be an enormous amount of applause going on, um, and eventually that will die away, and then that is the moment for you to start your speech. I'm told there will be many interruptions. Um, nice friendly ones, one. I friendly <laughs> ones. Yes, that's the Yes. Mr. Speaker, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. After Washington, six other cities, Miami and Tampa in Florida, then on to Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston in Texas. Queen comes home. Her Majesty's Yacht Britannia has sailed out to Miami to join the royal party. Fascinating. There was someone called Lady Grundy, and that is Prince Philip at school. Mm -hmm. Better not say it, then. <laughs> oh, sweet. And, um, I didn't know whether Charles told you, ma'am, but, uh, they've announced this morning that uh, you're going to give a knighthood to General Shortstop. Oh, right. Uh, I don't mind that. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I think it was, uh, everyone was assuming you were going to do it, so it's probably a very good time. Mm. Well, I don't know. But actually, none of, none of that is the thing. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, that's all right. 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 Well, that's Yes, we have that, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This evening, the Queen is hostess to Florida's grandest society. At the top of the guest list are two former presidents of the USA. Oh, Decaffeinated. Oh, if you take a cup, we'll find some decaffeinated coffee. I hope. Do you have any decaffeinated coffee? Coming. Oh. I mean, I, you know, we're, we're, we, you know, we do, we try our best. Coming. Is that decaffeinated? No. No. It's all here. Stop it. Get it. Come Decaffeinated. Decaffeinated. Now we'd like to meet the president. Which one? It's amazing how much metal they put in. I have to carry a car to get through the airport security. So you and time's off. Yes. Mine must be more deep seated because mine doesn't stand off. <laughs> I'm finding great comfort in the fact that even though it rained on the Queen today, it actually rained on the Pope when he was in Miami too. Right. So we're accustomed to showing our blessings on people by raining on them. Now, if you've got two thirds of the funds paying for the bureaucrats, you can give only one third to the needy people. Something's wrong with that thing. Now, because, you know, because of the, of the way that the, 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 the services have, have been planned for people to grab. Well, I know we tried to get some of these things changed and reduce them. Um, but, for example, we've got a rule that still to this day that a supervisor's salary is based on the number of people he supervises. Well, now, you've got a group of people there that have no interest in reducing <laughs> the payload. <laughs> Even if they can, because it'll reduce their salary. Obviously, yeah. It's, it's, it's extraordinary, isn't it, how... I mean, I think the next generation are going to have a very difficult time. <laughs> Buckingham Palace is preparing for another influx of visitors. It's an investiture day, one of 17 this year. Some of the 3,000 men and women who have recently been given honors come with their families to receive the insignia personally from the Queen. will immediately touch you first on the right shoulder and then on the left shoulder with the sword. She says nothing. So once you have received the accolade, stand up and come round to the left-hand side of the stool, where the Queen will attach to you the insignia that you are here to receive. As soon as the Queen has attached to your insignia, she'll talk to you. She'll be actually talking to you while she's doing it. And then she will shake your hand. 
please, the handshake is the signal that your time is up. The most excellent order of the British Empire. Venerable Thomas Dyson, Archdeacon of Bermuda. One mustn't have a long conversation, obviously, because you'll never, never finish. The question you ask is what is your hope that you're going to, to, to get the, the, the answer that you want. Like it doesn't always happen. Very dingy world, aren't we? Unfortunately, enharmonic finishing the seat. A post-mortem with the trainer, Lord Huntingdon. You just have to find the right register. He was moving up all the time. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. He said just, he just flattened out a little bit right, just right at the end. He had an awful, obviously, awful, awful, awful lot to do. To do. do yeah. 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 Well, 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 yes. Which is fine if they are going to blow up in front back, and come back. back. But if they're keeping going, yes. you That's can't do it. No, you no. can't do it. Now, it's the big race, the derby, an occasion for a national flutter, even up in the royal box, where the traditional sweepstake is drawn by the Queen. Hector Protector. Oh, Hector Protector. Duke of Edinburgh. Oh. <laughs> Lord of the dance. Michael Oswald. Nice to see the Nice to see the Nothing. Oh. Lady Grimthorpe got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Lucy Kerr. It's a Queen Elizabeth's Queen Mother. <laughs> and... Generous. The Queen. Stay up. <laughs> Oh, he's fitted him up now. On the wrong leg. Look, it's on the wrong leg. No wonder it can't go around the corner. Biggest on the rail. That's generous. That's generous. What colour is the star of the dam? Uh, yes. What? You're all on the wrong leg. Yeah. Who's miles behind?
friend who kiss, kiss my hand down there. A group of ministers attends the monthly meeting of one of the most ancient committees in the kingdom, the Privy Council. Orders in council allow the government to make regulations without going back to Parliament. When the Queen formally approves, the new proposal becomes law. Approved. It's the grandest of rubber stamps. Drafts of 17 orders in council, one under the Universities of Oxford and Cambridge Act 1923, two appointing James Bennett Esquire. In a tradition started by Queen Victoria, the council remains standing. It's a good way to keep meetings brief. Three appointing Mrs. Marianne Doherty and two others to be three of Your Majesty's inspectors of schools in Scotland, four under the Burial Act 1853, and five to seventeen confirming schemes made by the Church Commissioners. Approved. And that, Your Majesty, concludes the business for today's council. It's very lit, isn't it? We want to be happy ever since. It's extremely very lit, I just have to make it easy. We're still up to the Council of the Inspectors of Schools. Yes. Which is obviously a throwback to the days before the Department of Education and Science. Yes, I think it must be. And, and also that, that uh, Scotland is, is separate. Ha! <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> things in a different way. Scotland beckons. It's June the 28th, and the Queen is on her way to Hollywood. The railway chiefs are all aboard too, because this is the inaugural journey of the Intercity 225 from London to Edinburgh. I remember when we arrived that day, there was still a little bit of, of the um, uh, wall to be, blown, to be blown up, and the border, a small hole, I was invited to look through, and when one looked through, one could see the French on the other side, <laughs> and they brought home to us. Yes, yes, exactly. Extraordinary, yes, I mean, yes. first time for 8,000 years. It's a very emotional thing. Yes, 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 yes. But in, in the Scottish Parliament, there's a very strong sense of are you building new rolling stock and things to oh, yes, go? Yes, yes, yes. yes this, this we're building uh, new rolling stock, starting new trains. So what we are keen to do is to get people as close as possible on that line who are commuting to their place of work. Mm. And so hopefully we can achieve that. We looked at 80 options, which are now with the Secretary of State. 80? 80, yes. Yeah, no, 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 narrowed down to no, four, no, I'm pleased to say. Before it reached me. We've down to four. That was my reaction as well when I heard about the 80. <laughs> The palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh was once the home of Mary Queen of Scots. There are two garden parties here this week. The guests at this one will feel at home. They are all gardeners. Hello, Mary. How long have you been uh, the head gardener? Nine, nine and a half years. And is it, what sort of garden is it? Is it a it's neat for vegetables, ambition, crops? Just about that. Is it all the inconvenient moments? Nothing. Well, the wife's the gardener, I'm the, the hard worker. <laughs> it's also for the people, isn't it? It does, it does food, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm only a weeder, really. My mother actually taught you, man, to make butter pats. I think what you were going to say that, but I was rather proud of the fact that I can run a butter pat. And I have to show everybody now here how to do it. How to do it? Yeah. 
Following the custom of Queen Victoria, she spends a week at Holyrood each summer. Wherever she is, she tries to catch the television news program. After all, she has met an awful lot of the people who appear in them. Yugoslavia's new president calls for an immediate truce as a ceasefire falls apart and fierce fighting breaks out. Tanks blast their way through roadblocks on the borders of the breakaway Republic of Slovenia. And federal jets attack targets in Slovenia, including its capital. But the most serious fighting was on the border with Croatia. Today's news of civil strife is of more than ordinary interest. The Queen is about to make an unannounced flying visit to Northern Ireland, her first since 1977. It was arranged with the highest security and the deepest secrecy. Ulster is full of reminders of the terrorism it has suffered for more than half the Queen's reign. The defence of the realm is the first duty of a state. So there has always been a specially close link between the sovereign and the armed forces. The program for this rainy day includes presenting new colours to the Ulster Defence Regiment at its barracks in Lisbon. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do consecrate and set apart these colours, that they may be a sign of our duty towards our Queen and our country in the sight of God. to stand by and let evil prosper. I salute your courage, your sense of duty, and your resolve, together with a determination which I share that terrorism cannot be allowed to win. The afternoon is devoted to civilians. A garden party, also in the rain, and a visit to a hospice in North Belfast, where the Queen is to open the new wing. Yeah. When Her Majesty the Queen is just standing at the chair, it's understanding it's a bit limited, mm -hmm. so she yeah. probably not respond. Yes, yeah. but we've told her, and she's been chatting this morning quite a bit, which has been a uh, pleasure to us because. For days, we can go doesn't, without saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it falls, and other times it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, Today, okay. it's very nice. Knows that I've been there. Yes, and she was uh, this morning uh, talking quite a bit, so I'm sure the news mm -hmm. and what we were sharing has had some impact on that. Mm -hmm. Where Where do you live? Just not far away, five miles. The Jordan's can I live? Do you? Yes. Mrs. Eileen Thompson and mother and daughter of Nathan is the least better and Andrew Martin. Where is he? How many? Very nice, isn't it? Very nice. I never saw how many years. See this day, and I'm most honored. Well, it's very nice. Didn't think I would have known. Three weeks. Three weeks. The surprise visit to the province lasted six hours. Two days later, it still the main talking point at Hollywood. I suddenly saw you at lunch. <laughs> And I thought, well, that's all. He never told me he was going to be in Northern Ireland. And I suddenly remember that he didn't know I was going to be there either. I had no idea. No, it was an amazing, well-kept secret. It really was. Everything in Northern Ireland, it, it isn't just being a soldier. It affects all families. Absolutely. Right. I mean, you, you can be shot at any min
It's in high summer that the gardens of Buckingham Palace are at their best. But indoors, the routine of the working year. The Queen is doing her boxes, the official papers that over the years have given her a unique knowledge of confidential government business. Most people have a, a job and then they go home. And in, in this existence, the job and the life go on together because you can't really, really... divide it up. The boxes and the communications just keep on coming. And of course, with modern communications, they come even quicker. I mean, luckily, I'm a quick reader, so I can get through a lot of reading in quite a short time. So I do rather um, begrudge some of the hours that I have to, to do instead of being outdoors. G7, the Western Economic Summit, the big event of the summer, and Britain's turn to be host to six visiting heads of government. It's 12 years since James Callaghan was Prime Minister, but the palace reception brings together present and past, left wing and right, home politicians and overseas statesmen. <laughs> While you've been keeping me working very hard, my wife has been busy shopping. Hey, I'm sorry. We've had to work in very hard. Because he is a finance minister, and finance ministers have to work very hard. Prime Minister, how are you? Very nice to see you again. I very much enjoyed our talk the other day. Ma'am, how are you? Lovely to see you. We're looking forward to my visit to Japan. Summer school again this year. But I'm quite pleased because I managed to fund it from the sale of my own uh, lithographs of my paintings. So at least I feel I've earned it. And I was absolutely blunt with him. And I told him the situation. But nobody else went and told him this. Now I got a message back that he rather wishes he'd listened to my advice. Yeah. I, I, I he mean, paid I, no attention to, any, to anything. No, I, I just just wonder so much. Is is he? I mean, he is master of his own situation, is Absolutely. he? Absolutely. He really is. Absolutely. Because I mean, it's very interesting, isn't it, no. to have somebody no. who's been morally, and, and nominally, and every way else to him. The more we try the more his people will support him. Years of, of separation and the, um, the, the, the difference in education, the attitude, the human attitude, the 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 and that's what happened. Do you didn't think tell him face to face. No, but he couldn't. He couldn't go to Baghdad. Like Why not, ma'am? I went to Baghdad. Well, I know you did. You're expendable now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm expendable. Yes, that's You're true. expendable. He couldn't go to, to Baghdad at that moment. Uh, there are lots of people who would like to be Secretary of State. You're not lining up, I see. Are we lining up? Are we lining up? Yes. Are we going to have another photo uh, session? Photo no, the boys, boys, think so. boys, boys only. Line up.
5,000 miles from Buckingham Palace, 42 presidents and prime ministers are driving through the night to meet the Queen. It's a far cry from the wealthy group of seven. This is Harare in Zimbabwe, where the Commonwealth heads of government are in conference. The Queen, as head of the Commonwealth, presides over a group of 50 independent nations, about a quarter of the world's population. It's a sort of British Empire old boys club. You don't have to be rich to belong. Your Majesty, when Malaysia was under British rule, we had British advices, <laughs> whose advice must be obeyed. <laughs> we also had Malay sultans, who were designated by the British as the rulers, but of course they may not rule. <laughs> <laughs> Our parliaments are presided over by Mr. Speakers, who may not speak. <laughs> so it is not strange that we have a commonwealth where the wealth is not common. <laughs> During the conference, which takes place every two years, the Queen holds a private audience with each of the heads of government. Many of them are old friends, but tonight there's an unexpected guest at the party. We're on to sport, Your Majesty, that most important... And... This is the first time the Queen has met Nelson Mandela. <laughs> when I was speaking uh, to Prime Minister Major, I was speaking to Prime Minister Major on telephone. And he made a few remarks uh, on sanctions and investment. But the greater part of our speeches was on cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Sport will be the first thing, yes. isn't it? Which no, will that's what we're discussing here. Yes. 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 The Americans proved that, too, didn't they? When Nixon went over to China, they started the ping pong. Ping pong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, please, I'm early in the morning. <laughs> Somebody asked me, had I been to Africa before? which was nice of them to ask, but I did say that I had been everywhere in the Commonwealth in Africa and in other countries in Africa. I think I've seen more of Africa than almost anybody. <laughs> It's time for the holidays, time for the highlands. Well, I suppose Balmoral is a place one looks forward to very much as the summer goes on. I think that it has an atmosphere of its, of its own. If you just hibernate. But it's rather nice to hibernate for a bit when one leads such a very movable life. To be able to sleep in the same bed for six weeks is, is a nice change. Now, are we going to get on? <coughs> yeah, Jenny? Well, now we come on. Pony trekking with their grandmother are Prince William and Prince Harry, Zara Phillips, and the young Princess Beatrice. Well, I mean, you know, sadly, we didn't have a Jim Connor when There is, I suppose, a certain fascination in, in keeping the place as Queen Victoria um, had it. We, nothing very much has changed. And I think, luckily, all the children like it. All the grandchildren like it. And they sense the freedom there, I think, too. And you can go out for miles and never see anybody, and uh, you can walk or ride. And it's, it's endless possibilities. And we like um, picnics, and we like open air. Unless the holidays are very short, you live it to the full, I think. Well, they get farther than we can. 
And then Brandy. also get faster. Get away. Can I come? Well, one day you will, yes. Yeah, when you're a bit bigger. No, I can't. Well, let's follow it. We'll follow. Say, come on, Smokey. Come on, Smokey. Huh? The Prime Minister has been on his travels, halfway around the world in ten days. Now he comes to Balmoral for the first time to report to the Queen as Prime Ministers have done each summer since the days of Queen Victoria. Hello there. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Welcome to see you. Welcome to see you. Nice to see you again. Very nice to you. Very nice to be here. Political power passed from the Sovereign to the Prime Minister long ago. But the Queen still has the right to be consulted, to encourage and to warn. Yes. The Prime Minister's royal consultant now has 40 years' experience of affairs of state to share with him, as he treads in the footsteps of Margaret Thatcher, James Callaghan, Wilson, Heath, Douglas Hume, Macmillan, Eden, and Winston Churchill. The Queen's first audience with the Prime Minister was with Churchill in February 1952, when John Major was eight years old. The feeling in Moscow uh, in the period I was there was just astonishing. It was actually uh, like living with history. One was in the middle of a meeting, and somebody burst into a room and said, I've just finished talking to Gorbachev, or Yeltsin, or Selayev and this is what they're going to do. And tomorrow in the Congress, we're going to present these particular plans. It was a, an extraordinary day. It's gone so quickly. One can, I mean, certainly here one can't take it in, but there it must be even more traumatic, mustn't it? Well, it was absolutely amazing. I laid a wreath in the, near the Kremlin at the site where the three demonstrators were crushed and killed. And there were huge crowds there. And I had the opportunity of stopping to talk to some of them. Not too many of them spoke English. So I found one man who spoke beautiful English, and I asked him how he felt. And he said he was extremely interested, but he came from Woking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of thing that happens to me when I talk in a crowd. You know. But I have had quite a lot of prime ministers, starting with uh, Winston, and some stayed longer than others. They unburden themselves, or they tell me what's going on, or if they've got any problems. And sometimes one can help in that way, too. But we had uh, quite a few exchanges on other matters as well that, mm -hmm. that we must come to. Yes. They know that one can be impartial, so to speak. I think it's, um, it's rather nice to feel that one's, one's a sort of a sponge. And, and everybody can come and tell one things. And, and some things stay there, and some things go out the other ear, and, and something's never come out at all. One just, one just knows about it, you know. And, and occasionally you can um, be able to put one's point of view, which perhaps they hadn't seen it from that, that angle. It was mainly the uh, heavily subsidised gas supplies in parts of Europe that caused the difficulties three or four years ago. Mm. He's a very good, very good uh, plantsman, the gardener. He keeps it very tidy too. This is their shed, and and, and that's one of the, the garden house we've just done up. And uh, before you could say knife, the gardener had gone, <laughs> and so it's empty, sadly. Soon it will be autumn and time to return to London for another state opening of Parliament. In Balmoral, neighbours, estate and royal family join together for a farewell celebration, the Gillies Ball. The year has turned full circle. If you live in this sort of life, which people <laughs> don't very much, you live very much by tradition and by continuity. I, f I find that's one of the sad things, that people don't take on jobs for 
for life. They, they try different things all the time. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you know exactly what you're going to be doing two months hence, or even beginning to know about next year. And, and I think that this is what the younger members find difficult, is, is the regimented side of it. to sort of work out in your own mind the hard work and then what you enjoy in retrospect from it of the people you've met like the, the, the small soldier who was giving a gallantry award to him and I said that was a very brave thing to do oh he said it was just the training and I have a feeling that in the end probably the training is, is the answer to a great many things you can do a lot if you're properly trained and I hope I have been <laughs>